We're honored to be joined now by Eric Betzig, a Nobel laureate and this year's national lecturer. So Eric, first of all, congratulations. Thank you very much. Tell us about the talk you'll be delivering Monday night. Well, I hope to give everybody a feeling for um, the changes that have happened in microscopy over the past 20, 30 years, specifically with my group of people and the work we've done and the a lot of work from a lot of biological collaborators and to give people a sense of, of, uh, of all the different types of microscopes and how they can answer different types of questions with some examples of different biological findings that our collaborators have been able to made with, make with these tools. What's the next step from here? Um, well, there's still a lot of, I guess, holy grails of microscopy as I call them, so I, I feel like we've hit pretty well on the aspects of very high spatial resolution, very high speed, low damage. But um, one of the challenges still is the ability to see more than a couple things in the cell at the same time. A normal cell has 10,000 or more different types of proteins and it's the interaction among all of these things that, that makes the cell what it is. And so it would be wonderful if one could be able to study many, many proteins at the same time. Unfortunately, we don't know how to get there right now, but that's one holy grail. Another one is that um, most um, of the time people in biology are interested in fluorescence as the tool by which to visualize the cell. Um, I have a love-hate relationship with fluorescence. It has single molecule sensitivity, um, it has the ability to mark any specific protein you want in the cell, but it bleaches, it can create toxicity, it creates a bowling ball on the protein you care about from the fluorescent tag and so forth. So another holy grail is label-free imaging. There are label-free microscopes, but unfortunately most of them don't have the really broad contrast of being able to see different proteins that fluorescence does. So the other holy grail would be to be able to, in fact, to combine those holy grails, would be to be able to see dozens or hundreds of proteins in the same cell without having to label them. Again, right now that's just science fiction, but then again, super resolution and other things were science fiction 50 years ago. Something to look forward to. Right, yes. And you're headed to UC Berkeley next? Yes. Mm -hmm. So at Berkeley, um, uh, I actually wanted, I have two things I want to accomplish there. The first is um, a big part of um, our work at Genelia is not just making microscopes, but trying to make microscopes accessible to the biologist. Because making the microscope is only the beginning of the story, and in the end, they're only useful if they help you to address a question that could not be addressed previously. In order to do that, having one microscope and one physicist's lab is not going to cut it. They have to be everywhere and there's a very long pipeline, a valley of death, from initial prototype of a microscope until it's commercialized and therefore broadly available to people. So with Genelia, we created an advanced imaging center to allow people to try out these microscopes pre-commercialization and also then to create sort of a demand so that the commercial vendors then want to take the risk and invest the resources to commercialize it. The, Ber the one at Genelia has been very successful, but it's again fairly localized to where we are and it's oversubscribed. So I want to create a version for the Bay Area or even for the world, but largely track people from the Bay Area out in Berkeley. So that's job one. But the other thing that I look forward to doing at Berkeley is my career I've usually spent about anywhere from seven to a dozen years doing something and then I say, I've had it, I'm fed up, I've done it enough. I'm kind of at that point with microscopy again. I feel like the field has, you know, every field kind of goes through a period where it's very fertile at the beginning and then at the end you've plowed the field too much and it's, it's not really law of diminishing returns. So um, I want to find a new direction. Um, I don't know what that direction will be yet. Um, I figured Berkeley would be a good place to find that direction because there's very few universities that have the breadth of expertise on one campus that Berkeley has. My vague aspirations um, would be to do something either in nuclear energy or space propulsion. Um, they've always been kind of passions and interests of mine as an amateur and I wouldn't mind becoming a professional in either one of those fields. That's great.
Thank you so much, Eric. Appreciate yes, your time. Thank you.